Hello Synapse fans! Today we'll be talking about the Map Data Tool for Synapse Lake Databases. And if you're not familiar with Synapse Lake Databases, they're a pretty cool concept. They allow you to overlay tables and metadata on top of files in your Azure Data Lake. What this allows you to do is do things like relationships and joins and still query those tables with SQL or Spark, uh, but they're still living as files in your lake. And just to show you an example of that, if you come here to the plus table option in my lake database and I show the from template, you're going to see there's a lot of cool data domains and data models already built in for you. I actually chose a couple of those tables from customers for the purposes of this demo. But there's a lot of different domains in here. You'll see things like financial reporting, uh, manufacturing, you'll see some uh, healthcare stuff like patient. So uh, even within those, if I click under expand manufacturing, You'll see I have things like, um, you know, activities and alarms and batches. So lots of detailed tables that would, you know, fit your use case uh, and allows you to get started much quicker uh, on the kind of destination table side. And what the map data tool is, is kind of the perfect way to load those tables, right? So it's a tool that takes a wizard like approach to uh, take flat files or other lake databases, do some transformation if you want, and then land those into your lake database tables. So to get started, we're going to click this map data button at the top here. Now, if this is your first time doing it, it will prompt you to you know start a debug cluster, uh, and that will only take about a minute or two. And what that is for is if you want to do things like data previewing, uh, it allows the compute for that to happen. I've already warmed one up, so I'll instantly go to the next screen here, uh, which is basically asking me, well, where's the source type, right? So in this case, I'm going to have a flat file, a CSV, that I want to pull in from my data lake account. And then it's going to ask me, well, what's the connection string for that link service? In this case, uh, I'm going to use the built-in Synapse uh, data lake storage. But if you wanted, you can click new and go through the link service wizard and set up a connection string to a different data lake storage account. Then it's going to ask me my data set type. You'll see here I have three options. I have the CDM or common data model, a delimited text, that's going to be your CSVs, right? And then parquet. So in this case, I know I'm doing a CSV, so I'm going to select delimited text. Then you'll see here I have my delimited text options. I have the first row as header. I have different delimiters, right? Uh, with comma delimiter probably being the most common, but I know a lot of people, for instance, like using pipe delimited files. So you have those options here. Then at the bottom, you'll notice I have the option for the folder path, or it says in the little hint here, or file name. And so what we can do here in the map data tool is in a simple use case like I'm doing for this demo, I can pick an individual file. I can pick my sales uh, CSV file and load it to my sales table. But you might have a folder worth of sales files. Maybe you have one for every month, right? Uh, you can point this at a, the, the folder of the CSVs and load all of the CSVs into your sales table. And then each row here could be a different source file to load to a different destination table. So I could have one row here that points to my sales folder, and I could have a different row here that points to my customer folder, and a different row that points to my address folder, or so on. Uh, that way, when I get into the map data tool, I can load all of the tables at once. And again, for this simple use case, we're just going to pick a single file, uh, but just do know you have that flexibility uh, that it doesn't have to be one file at a time. So I'm going to browse to my demo folder, map data. And you'll see here that I have a sales data and a customer data. I'm going to choose the sales data for the demo and hit continue. And I'm going to give this a name. Let's just call this sales mapping. And then hit OK. Now this is going to take a second to bring up the map data tool. And it's basically going to be a wizard-like approach that we're going to land these into our destination target tables. So you'll see here on this middle pane that we have our target tables. I have a customer in order in this link database. But again, if you had you know, a dozen tables or more, they would all be listed here. So you could choose which ones you wanted to load. In this case, I know I want to load this into my order file. And you'll, I'll click this new mapping button to get started. You'll see here is each row here is going to represent a column that I want to map. I want to know 
uh, what's the mapping method, where's the source, in this case, you know, column in the CSV, and then what's the target column in the lake database table. So when we click the mapping method, we're going to see a whole bunch of methods here of the kind of commonly used uh, mappings or transformations. Uh, let's talk about direct. That's going to be the easiest one at first. This is basically, I know what column I want on my source side. So this case, let's say order ID, right? So this is in my CSV file. And I know I want that to go to order ID in my destination lake database table. That's a direct mapping. You know, it's going to take whatever it is in there and put it into the other column. That's the simplest one. And for a lot of use cases, that, that might work out really well, right? However, we do provide a lot of the common transformations that people are going to do. So we have the ability, for instance, to do something like a trim function, right? So typically, uh, with a tool like Mapping Data Flow or other tools, uh, you would have to write that in an expression of some sort. I want to trim this column. I might have to pass it some optional parameters, depending on the function, right? Uh, in this approach, we do a lot of that for you. You don't have to know the exact details of that expression language, right? So if I choose trim, and let's choose uh, region as the example. This is uh, you know a, a string column. You'll see that by the ABC at the, the beginning there. Uh, this is going to trim my region column, and then I'm going to put it into some column uh, in my destination uh, lake database. And I'm going to try to find a good one. Uh, let's do ISO currency code. Like the region is going to map to currency code. I don't know if that actually makes sense in this case, but it's, it's just for uh, demo purposes. So again, you can apply uh, trim, upper, lower. We have a lot of common string functions in there as well. But you'll have noticed that we also have things like aggregate functions, right? And typically for something like a, a sum, so we're going to say let's sum the unit price. Maybe that's our like total unit price. Uh, typically without some function in a, a tool, again, like mapping data flow, uh, you'd have to know like, well, what other columns do I need to sum by? And I, you'd have to specify it. What we do here is we do a lot of smart logic and basically the non-aggregated columns, we automatically do essentially a group by for, the, for you, right? So when you're summing the unit price, in this case, it would sum it by order ID and region. Um, so that, that group by would automatically be applied uh, and you get that logic without having to specify that. So a lot of smartness built into the, the selections here. And then let's finally cover the advanced. So uh, maybe you are a semi-advanced user or you want a function that is not on this list uh, and is still available in our you know, Synapse Mapping Data Flow Expression Language. You still have access that, to that in this advanced column. What that does is it's going to open up an expression builder. And if I click the Open Expression Builder there, I get the Mapping Data Flow Expression Builder IDE here. And you'll see here that if I click Functions, I have all of the functions that are available in Mapping Data Flow, and there are lots of them. So if you want that kind of advanced functionality, or maybe I want to do manipulation of like the current date or date logic manipulation that is a little bit more complex, uh, you have that ability to do that. So you can kind of mix and match where you would have simple column mapping, simple trims that are easy to do and quick to do, and then maybe one or two or a few of these advanced ones where you're writing a little bit more complex logic, but still a quicker kind of time to start than starting from scratch uh, in mapping data flows. So let's just do an example one here. Let's do something like, let's calculate a profit. And I won't even uh, use an actual built-in function for that. I'll just do a simple uh, unit uh, cost uh, minus unit price, right? Uh, just to uh, get me my kind of profit on that, that unit, right? So um, that is a kind of formula. I right? am just doing some basic math there. So a calculated column, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, and then I'm going to map that to a column. And I think I have one at the end here for unit profit, right? So uh, again, I can do some simple expressions that will apply this to all of the the rows inside of my CSV, and then write it to that destination lake database column. And when I'm ready, right, I definitely could do a lot more of these, but for the purpose of the demo, I want to keep it simple. I'm going to hit this Create Pipeline button. 
And what that's going to do is it actually is going to create a Synapse pipeline for me. It's going to create a Synapse mapping data flow for me. Uh, and then I can still edit that. It's these artifacts that exist in my Synapse workspace now uh, that I still get all the goodness of Synapse, right? I get the, the monitoring in, in Synapse. I get the CICD capabilities, right? Um, all of that has now just been created for me. I just didn't have to be an expert at creating Synapse pipelines or mapping data flows uh, to be able to get started. So if I go to this data flow, you'll see here, if I double click on it, it'll open the data flow. And then I'm gonna to zoom to fit here. You'll see that it created these transformations in the mapping data flow for me. So again, if I click, click on this derived column transformation, that trim function that I specified is written out here as an expression. That uh, advanced calculated column that I did is already written out here for me. If I look at the select uh, here at the end, you'll see those those direct mappings, like the order ID, the uh, is ISO currency code, right? All that stuff is done for me here and generated a mapping data flow. The, the great thing is this mapping data flow is at scale, right? This is using Spark on the back end to do that data loading for me. And if I click on the sync, you'll see here that it is writing to my workspace lake database and it's writing to the order table. Uh, and it created that for me. Now, again, if I would have created um, multiple files and multiple destinations, it would have created a more complex uh, mapping data flow that had you know, multiple syncs and multiple sources and so on. Um, but in this simple case, really quickly, I was able to do transformation. Um, that file could be actually a very large file. In this case, it was just uh, probably a few hundred kilobytes, but that file could be, uh, you know, gigabytes uh, or multi hundreds of gigabytes and scale appropriately because this is using that mapping data flow technology in Synapse. It's just a very quick way to get started with loading your data into your Synapse Lake databases. So hope you enjoy, have a chance to, to test it out, play around with it and you know have a quicker way to get started with uh, loading your Synapse Lake database tables. Thanks and enjoy.